Hi, Kiana. Good morning, Jordan. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Awesome. I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Um, so today we're joined by Kiana. Kiana is a business student here at Lakehead. Um, both of us are uh, joined today live from our very own homes. Um, so we are working remotely today. Um, and we're going to chat a bit about the student experience, Kiana's academic experience as well. Um, we're, we're just going to take this opportunity to ask questions um, for her about her program, about her, her living experience and her student experience. But also, if you have any questions related to uh, Lakehead in general, please feel free to ask me. Um, I'm more than happy to answer those questions. Um, right off the bat, I already see a couple questions come in. Yeah. Um, so the first one is, any updates about sep September intake? So that's a good question. Thanks for the uh, question. Um, there have been no updates as far as September intake. Um, so I do encourage for that student, if you visit us online at lakeheadu.ca forward slash about forward slash coronavirus, all of our updates um, regarding COVID-19 and the coronavirus will be posted on that website on a regular basis. So uh, our senior management team here at Lakehead is working very diligently to get answers to some of those really important questions. And they are updating that, uh, that page all the time. All right, so um, I guess I'll, I'll pass it off to you to introduce yourself first, um, and then we'll, we'll go into some of the questions I have for you today. Okay, sure. At first, I should say hello to our viewers. And my name is Kiana. I'm taking business MSc course. And as you know, we have three kind of stream in business master level. So I take one of them. And my campus is in Thunder Bay. My hometown is uh, Tehran in Iran. It's the capital city of Iran. And uh, yeah, just that about awesome. me. Awesome. Um, so you said that there's the three courses within the master, the graduate level of the yes. business program, the faculty of business. So you're doing the masters of science and management. Um, and then there's also the MBA course. And there's two options for the MBA. There's a full year and then there's a 16th. 16 month option too. Yes. So with, um, with your um, MSc program, the Masters of Science and Management, how long is that program? Uh, actually, my program is just one year and two semesters mm -hmm. course-based. So uh, you, uh, as a student, you should just pass some courses. It's just uh, three and a half uh, credit that you should pass. And uh, the last semester is going to go for your thesis or your project. There is two options for you to, you can take the project and thesis. So the difference between these two is not that much, but just thesis, you go through that deeper and it's going to be take a little bit long. So it's much better mm -hmm. for some of, some of the students that not going to take PhD after just a stop by project. So, and the, I can uh, talk about the difference between MBA and my program, just like this, that my, pro my program is just uh, like the first year of PhD, you know, because it's research-based, writing article, reading article, but the MBA is just like course-based, familiaring with some techniques in business or something like that, yeah. For sure, yeah. Um, so obviously we're gonna get into the specifics of your program and talk about your experience what you like most about it, research and all that. Um, but I always like to start off giving our viewers a chance to get to know you a bit more. Um, do you have like a fun fact to share with the viewers? Oh uh, yeah, actually it's uh, related to somehow my personality uh, because uh, it's, it's something, the fact about me, I afraid from height. I can't be a stand in a high level or something like that because it's kind of have some fear for me. But <laughs> In most of situation, because I'm somehow an adventurous person, I like to try everything. So I go through that to meet my fear, conquer my fear. So I remember one experience about that when I was in a water park in Dubai. Just mm -hmm. I was with my, some of my friends and all of them afraid going to uh, some of the place with me. But I go high and 
sleep in that and scream a lot. But <laughs> yeah, I think that is kind of related to my personality. I want to try every new things, every unknown thing. So, For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously the hype didn't stop you at the amusement park and you, you found the tallest water slide. There yeah. There. Did any of your friends go down it with you? Or oh, you no, not at all. It's just me. Yeah. <laughs> And you're scared of heights too. Wow. I'm oh first. yeah. Yeah. You got, you, it sounds like you're really adventurous and you're willing to like try and conquer your fear, of course. Yes, exactly. Yes. Awesome. Um, so then there's another question I have here before we move into some of the next questions. How much possibility is the percentage that September 2020 on campus class will start regularly for international students? Um, so again, another great question. Um, percentage wise, it sounds like it's, uh, you're asking about the probability of it starting. Um, there's no question that we are going to have uh, a fall intake and courses will be running in the fall. That's not a question. Right now, we, um, we at Lakehead and our senior management team specifically is monitoring the situation very closely so that we can make proper decisions that are, um, that are abiding by the Government of Canada's guidelines, but also that are keeping our faculty, staff, and students safe. Um, so it's simply too early to say um, what method or what mode that fall course, fall semester is going to be in. Um, our, our hopes 100% are to have it in person, um, but I can let you know that if you have applied to Lakehead, rest assured, we will connect with you. We will send you more information as soon as we've made that decision. Um, but it's, uh, as I said, it's simply too early to make that call right now. Um, so I saw another uh, question that was directly for you, Kiana. Okay. Um, it says your course is one year. It was a project based or thesis based, and how many years uh, work permit do you get? Uh, actually, uh, at first, when I entered the Lakehead University, I chose uh, thesis based, but I changed my stream with uh, some consulting with one of my professor, and I decided to not go through the PhD after, so I changed my decision to project based. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I can finish my study after one year, because uh, you can finish your project, it's, is doable, you know, but about the thesis, we should talk about with your professor. Maybe you should extend your semester to another one when you're working on thesis. It depends to you and your prof and your project. But about the work permit, as I talked with uh, immigration advisor in our university, is uh, usually they give one year program, just one year work permit. But sometimes it's going to happen. It's based, uh, it's based on the officer opinion. Maybe you can convince him or her to give you three years work, work permit. So, so it's, it's, it depends. Yeah, it's, it's almost flexible in the sense because I know that obviously students that do a full undergrad at Lakehead and complete four years, um, if they are successful in getting that, or they will get that work permit and they will get the three-year work permit, where as students that complete a one-year program, mm -hmm. um, it, it obviously falls back on the immigration officer yes. within the government of Canada to make that decision. Um, and there are so many factors that come into play. Uh, but thankfully, we do have a, a dedicated immigration advisor on campus um, yeah. who works for Lakehead International. So she meets with students all day, every day, basically. Okay. Um, I can rarely ever get to see her myself, which is fine because um, I know that she's answering really important questions and helping students, whether it be um, reapplying for another st study permit, extending their current one, working towards getting PR, working towards that um, work permit after graduation. There's so many questions that she fields every single day. Um, and we're so lucky to have her on our team full time. So she's accessible to all of our current students. Okay. And Jennifer is awesome. Exactly. She is. Yes. Alrighty. So I'll see if there's any more questions that come through. So no more questions right now. Um, for some of those new viewers that maybe didn't hear, as I was saying, if you submit your questions just using the comment tool, um, we will answer them throughout the webinar. But I do have my own questions to help guide our conversation. Um, so the first one I always like to ask the current students I interview is kind of what made you want to study abroad in Canada and also eventually Lakehead? Actually, I want uh, to be immigrant to a um, first level country and continue my life in that. So I, between uh, many countries, I choose Canada to live in and uh, 
one of the my first option for that is was the good nature of canada actually and uh, i choose between too many provinces ontario because i uh, through my research i heard that there is most of the job opportunity not all but most of them is in ontario so i choose uh, one university in ontario and between my research i prefer to actually come to not that much big city so i prefer to come a small community to is is uh jordan in my opinion it's a good idea because uh, as an immigrant as a first newcomer you're gonna improve your skill especially uh, english skill in a small community better than the big ones so sure. uh, yeah i choose like it and i'm more than happy now that i choose like it because my experience uh, in this university is awesome uh, i mean awesome. A- every single point is good for me so based on these features i choose that and the lake head i can say something about the lake head classes is not that much a student in each classes especially in my program is just just 13 people so mm-hmm. every professor know each of us by name even by some features of us and it's going to especially at the first time is going to give our some confidence we are so more confident to start a friendly conversation with our professor so sure. it's a good point about Lakehead University and mm-hmm. the staff even I, I got surprised the staff just know even our first name they all they know us so I like this yeah. thing it, yeah it's definitely it's with a, um, a slightly smaller campus I mean we're still a fully comprehensive university of course and we have um, a little over I think it's roughly around 9,000 students right now between Thunder Bay and Aurelia. Um, But the ability for our international staff members within the International Student Services team to recognize students by their first name and make that connection is almost the next step to helping them make sure that they feel like they're welcomed on campus, but also that they have a second home. Obviously, we're not here to replace your, your home, um, but we're almost a home away from home. So we know that when you move and you take your life and you move to Canada, whether it be Thunder Bay, whether it be Aurelia, and you're starting new, this new academic journey, but it's a journey for yourself to kind of explore and be more independent. Uh, we're there to support you and like be accessible if you need us too. So I did want to touch on um, uh, one of the points you made, so you said that choosing um, Thunder Bay was strategic because uh, you wanted to pick a smaller community just to kind of expand your skills within Canadian culture, but also English. Exactly. Um, can you kind of talk to maybe the experience that, thus far going into a smaller community and like what your expectations were and uh, what they are now? Oh, actually, it's uh, it's a good question. At first, for uh, being in a smaller community, I have an experience that even I have some photo about that. I uh, university offered us to spend the Christmas time with one family that be volunteer to being a host for a student. It was a great uh, experience because it was my first time to be a Christmas somehow party or dinner, a traditional one. So I was in a house of uh, one of the staff of university. They were awesome. So I asked for, from one of my uh, students in another province and the university is much bigger than mine, at least about the, you know, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the number of a student or something like that, sure. or the, the city population, population oh. or something but uh, they didn't have this opportunity. So it was mm-hmm. great for me, you know, when, when you are in a, uh, not a small city, I mean, the community that are friends together, so you have more opportunity to communicate with more people. So, so far during this, I'm, I, it's, it's gonna be nine months that I'm in Thunder Bay. So actually I can know that when I go through the bus, somehow I'm, fa- because I work here as well, so I'm familiar with, most of them so it's a good idea you know you can you can meet the people that familiar with them even i know the bus drivers as well so (laughs) it's a good option for me i think and and now sorry jordan now i'm so happy that i choose like it and even 
after I want to move to another city after my graduation, but my decision changed, so maybe I stay here. Awesome. So, yeah. Um, well, I'm happy to hear, obviously, that you're enjoying it and you feel like you've picked the right location to complete your studies. Um, and then kind of building off of what you were saying and, like, um, even though it, some people view it as a smaller community, we're still a fully uh, accessible city. We're connected to major city centers, whether it's by driving or whether by the air, international airport here um, on Thunder Bay, as well as Aurelia, a short drive to Toronto. Um, but also just the fact that um, in a bigger city, you can kind of get lost in the crowd in a exactly. sense. You can, you can fall back to your natural community. So I'm, of course, I'm sure you've made friends that are Iranian as well. Um, and you have that community and you can also make connections based on hobbies and passion projects. And you can do that through all the different clubs and programs that are run on campus exactly. as extracurriculars. Um, but it's also easy, like for you, if you're maybe to be in a big city to just fall back and just go exactly. to the Iranian community and speak your native language and not improve your English, which of course, improving your English and with your end goal to potentially immigrate to Canada having strong English skills is so important in that process. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, so I do see a question uh, that is related to part-time jobs. Is there any on-campus part-time jobs that we can apply for? If so, do they follow the same laws as off-campus ones? So really good question. Um, Lake does have quite a few on-campus part-time jobs. So several different departments at Lakehead have student positions. Um, I actually got my first job at Lakehead as a student position. I worked for the undergraduate admissions team. Um, so I actually had quite a bit of knowledge about international applicants as a first year student. So I worked there for a full year. Um, and then I saw an opening for a job within international enrollment for marketing and communications. Um, and so I, I applied and I was thankfully uh, accepted into that role and I got that. So I had that job for another um, two years and then as I graduated out of the university a role opened up that was full-time within my department so I applied for that and here I am today uh, helping with the new and social media efforts for international enrollment uh, but just, just speaking to part-time jobs on campus yes there's plenty of them um, obviously I just gave you the example of the two that I've held so far on campus um, but there, there's so many different options and of course it's, it's a good idea to connect with our Student Success Center too. So the Student Success Center, they host career fairs. They have a career zone on the Thunder Bay campus. We also have a co-op coordinator um, and they're always there to help you in that process to secure jobs. So whether it be needing help with your resume, if you're not too sure that it's polished enough or if you think that there, there might be um, a better layout for it potentially, you can go and get resume help. You can also have peers read over that resume. Um, there's so many different options. So I do encourage you, if you have any more questions about on-campus jobs too, um, feel free to reach out to us by sending us a direct message on Instagram. Uh, Jordan, sorry, based yes. on the things that you said, I just want to the, your uh, viewers that it, it's happened for me as well. I got my first on-campus job at the second semester and I'm so happy for that experience. Uh, actually, I tried a lot. I mean that you shouldn't be give up. So I applied for so many positions on campus and finally I got that one that I like to work with. So. And where are you working on campus? It's, uh, it was a student affair as a uh, communication with a student. So it's just kind of a research between a student. We spread questionnaire. We take some information for a student. For so sure. it's, yeah, it's, it's, it was a great experience as well. And I'm assuming, were you working with Lawrence in student affairs? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. So uh, that probably speaks to the fact that uh, our campus community is pretty tight knit. Uh, and we, it's easy to make connections. So obviously you made connections with one of my colleagues that also helps manage that digital media for the student affairs office. And I'm over here in international enrollment. Um, so I see another question. How many Iranian students are at Lakehead? Is there any suitable PhD? So I'm actually not too familiar with exact numbers of Iranian students at Lakehead. Um, as well, suitable PhDs. Um, that that definitely depends on what your background is, so what your previous studies are, your undergrad, your grad program, as well as what your passions are. I wouldn't I wouldn't encourage a student to take a PhD just to take it. 
I definitely think those students should be passionate about the topic and the subject that they're learning. Um, because uh, of course, when you're passionate about something and you want to learn more about it, that's when you really truly excel within that program. Um, so I do encourage you, if you visit us on our website, lakeedu.ca forward slash international, um, you can explore all of our programs, including the PhD programs. And if you need any help, once you, maybe you've narrowed it down to a couple of options, feel free to reconnect with us, reach out to us, or even connect directly with the Graduate Studies Office, um, and they can help you work through that process. Um, so this looks like the, it's a question for you. Do you have any problems understanding the lessons? Ah, uh, for just, I can't say that for the first week, just that, because you uh, somehow it's just got, uh, it's like language shock. So you just start your program, especially in my program, you should talk a lot and mm -hmm. you should understand the article well. So yeah, just, just the first week is going to be the worst week for you during the whole of your study, because you want to get familiar with so many accents. Uh, the prof attitude, uh, how they gonna teach, but after that is gonna be easy peasy for you. For sure, and then obviously, to speak to if you have any problems with maybe the the lessons themselves, or if you are having a bit of misunderstandings. I know that um, I graduated in undergraduate business, and all my professors were accessible, and I could approach them and just say like, "Hey, I really didn't get this concept, or I really need help with this. Like, are you able to give me more information?" And they were always happy to either send me the slides after or connect with me after whole office hours. They, I mean, all profs hold regular office hours so that students can drop in and meet with them and discuss some of these uh, problems. Um, so that's always something to remember too. If you are having any issues with the lessons, address it directly with your prof. Typically your prof, um, we're, we're really proud to have a small student to faculty ratio. So what that means is uh, the number of students to one faculty member. On Thunder Bay, it's 15 to one, and in Aurelia, it's 13 to one. Um, and so that's a number that we're really proud of because it shows our investment into having faculty members dedicated to the number of students we're actually hold, holding on campus. And uh, even, uh, Jordan, we have a academic zone because I went through that for proofreading of my, the writing of my article. So it's, mm -hmm. it's free. There is so many helps over there for writing your article, reading some problem with your math. So you should just get an appointment and go to them so they can help you. For sure, for sure. Um, and so there's another question. How is the situation in Canada regarding COVID-19? Is it getting worse? Um, so good question um, to answer that. The situation is evolving, of course. Uh, the entire nation is really coming together as a community to support our frontline workers. Um, and then also it's really important to know that the government of Ontario and the government of Canada is really stepping up to the challenge um, to support all of our citizens, including our students. Um, and they're working really closely with all of their different partners. So whether it's in the healthcare field, whether it's in the higher education field, uh, they're working to make sure that the supports are there and available to students, um, as well as to our citizens of Canada. So then there's a question, how is the situation in Thunder Bay regarding Corona? Um, so there have been reported cases in the Thunder Bay region um, but it, it actually, the numbers aren't very high right now. Um, and as far as I know, the, the public health authority, so there's a local health unit that manages the entire region. Um, their words obviously are to continue the social distancing, to continue practicing that, that safe space around you and obviously self-isolating when you need to or self-quarantine when you need to. Um, and then staying within your homes and not intermingling with other friends. Um, they're going to reiterate that message to make sure that we are flattening the curve, as they say. Uh, but the situation in Thunder Bay is not, is not bad right now. So, and we hope to see that it just continues going in the same path of uh, staying at a low level. <clears throat> so another question here, as a PhD student, normally how many hours can we work on campus? I know there is no limitation, but I want to know how many hours is possible per practically. Um, so that, that depends, of course, as to your, your exact workload and what program you're in and the professor you're working with, of course, uh, and how much time you want to dedicate to your studies versus how much time you should be working. Um, 
in your experience, Canna, I know that you're in a master's program, but how, how many hours a week were you working that you felt comfortable with? Uh, actually, because I have project, not thesis, because I, I'm sure that PhD students have thesis and going to research every day. And for example, for a special program like chemical or something should be available at lab whole day. But for me, just I got ten, I worked 10 hours per week for my on campus job. And I'm eligible to as an international student work 20 hours per week off campus. So I can do that. Because uh, the workload on my program, it's is the workload is heavy, but I gonna manage that it, it depends exactly as you said, depends on your program, your workload, and especially your, you know, your capacity. Because you should manage the whole thing together. You should work and study. Studies should be your more, uh, first priority. So, uh, yeah, for me, uh, it was good. Just 10 hours per week on campus and 20 hours per week off campus. But, for sure. And yeah. I also know that um, students can work up to full-time hours during scheduled academic Exactly, time. exactly. So, uh, for example, in the fall, we have an entire week that's called the Fall Reading Week. And then um, in February, typically, we have the study, uh, like the spring break almost. Um, and that's another dedicated week off. And then for undergraduate students, uh, if you aren't taking any summer courses, mm -hmm. so if you aren't enrolled in classes, but you are, of course, enrolled in a program, um, you can work up to full-time hours throughout the summer. So for those four months, April to August. Um, and then if you are doing a master's or a graduate program, that is a full year where the semesters do carry on throughout the summer. Um, again, if you have any academic breaks, you can work full-time hours or like Yana said, uh, there's different specifications of how, how much you can work, whether you're on campus or off campus. It all depends on kind of the study permit you receive. Um, so I see a question. At this point in time, there would be no jobs available. Um, so I think that might be more of an opinion question. <laughs> So there are jobs available, of course, on campus and off campus throughout the year. Uh, given the current situation, um, jobs, of course, across Canada, people have been laid off or have been affected by COVID-19. So it's something that we're monitoring really closely. And definitely, we encourage students to take that into consideration um, when, when they are planning for finances and whatnot. But that's not to say that there's not jobs accessible or available to students, because I, I know that there's quite a few of our students that are still working while doing school, even right now. Exactly. Um, so another question, can I do any business on campus or outside of campus as an entre entrepreneur while doing a master's? Uh, so to speak to that, we actually have within the faculty of business and um, one of our research units is the ingenuity space. So the ingenuity space is a business incubator and a maker space, maker space. So the business incubator is, it encourages students to start their own uh, business through entre entrepreneur opportunities. Um, there's funding available potentially. There's also plenty of supports available through that office. Um, and it's a really beautiful space where students can set up and kind of uh, rent out different pods to then manage their business. So whether it's too expensive to have a physical storefront, for example, um, and you can't afford that, but you need a dedicated workstation or a dedicated place to hold, hold meetings, do interviews potentially with future employees, um, you can do that through the ingenuity space here on the Thunder Bay campus. Um, So there's another question, how easy is it to get a part-time job as a student at Lakehead? So maybe I'll let you speak to kind of your experience, Canada, about um, applying and just staying dedicated to finding that job. Uh, you mean that how, how much time did I dedicate to that to find a job, you mean? Yeah, like just speaking to the experience, of course, um, with any job, it's, not, it's most likely not going to happen where it's one resume, one application. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see. When uh, I actually I was uh, lucky because then I come to Thunder Bay, I based on the things that you mentioned. And one of your question is that uh, the people that gonna start their programming fall are mo much more luckier than the winter ones, because there is much more job opportunity at fall. So when I uh, come to Thunder Bay, it just take one week for me to find uh, my first off campus job and one semester to find on-campus job. But, uh, you know, my success center in LU, 
uh, help me a lot to make my resume. I book an appointment with them two or three times and improve my resume. So at first you should make your CV improve that and get some consulting from the professional one that LU have one center in that, the my success that you can go through that and uh, take some helps. And sure. after that, keep trying. Just apply for any position that matches with your personality and your CV. So, and uh, don't give up. So you're going to take, you know, you're going to take that. So mm -hmm. just like, I'll reiterate something that you mentioned, like the support services through the student success center, whether it be the resume workshop, whether it be uh, fake interviews to help you improve your exactly. interview skills, but also the career fairs. So uh, uh, we bring actual employers right onto campus and we hold massive career fairs uh, for employers that are offering jobs right on the spot almost or are offering jobs for graduating students. They also have career fairs dedicated to certain fields. So I know we have an entire day dedicated to engineering career fair day and we also have one dedicated to our faculty of education and stu students that are going to be graduating as uh, designated teachers we have employers come onto campus and they're basically offering jobs, maybe, maybe not on the spot, but they're taking resumes, they're answering questions. And of course, as a future employer, as a, as a graduate, and you're looking to answer some of these questions about like, what are the working conditions? What are the hours? Uh, exactly. What are the benefits of working for your company? Our employers and our job or our career fairs are meant to answer all those questions and help connect you too. And it, it's also just great practice. I mean, even when I had uh, multiple jobs and I was working on campus and off campus, I would still go to the career fairs and just explore my options and see what opportunities I had as a student. Like I was saying, I did my undergrad at Lakehead for four years. I graduated last year and now I've been working for Lakehead for a year. Um, so another question, I wanted to know if we can see the Northern Lights in Thunder Bay. Uh, I would love to see them if possible. So you can, uh, if you actually visit our Instagram, um, so of course, I'm not going to encourage you to leave the live chat here today. Uh, but if you visit our Instagram, you can see one of our students posted Northern Lights. So they went to something called Silver Harbor, which is a conservation area about 15 minutes from Thunder Bay, maybe a little less. Um, and all you have to do is kind of hang out at night. It has to be a clear sky, of course, so not, not too many clouds. And then of course, the natural environments that create the Northern Lights or the Aurora, Aurora Borealis, uh, they have to line up, of course. Alrighty, so um, I, I know that we answered quite a few questions and I'm just gonna pull up my sheet here for the next few questions I had. Um, what were you excited or even nervous about before you left? Uh, uh, when I when I come to Canada, uh, especially uh, my city now, so uh, starting my study was the most thing that I was excited about because it's there is a one year gap between my previous master and uh, current master, so I just is excited about the uh, studying or something, especially in another language with new people, and uh, specifically finding new friends, international one from each country, each culture. So I was excited about that. And the thing that I was uh, nervous, if you want to know, it's uh, can I be successful on my own? I can study, work, do my stuff at home all together. So yeah, especially my program and like it helped me to time management to doing that, you know. Is, and being a multitask, the things that you're going to learn to, as being as a student in Canada, you're going to learn that skill. And uh, the things that I was worried about, that uh, my English skill is good enough and I meet some requirements for studying, working, communi communicate with other people, especially when English is their first language. So... For they sure. are the most thing that I was nervous about. So Yeah, of course. And to speak to that, um, how did you find that? Uh, of course, uh, you, I can appreciate that you were nervous that your English skills uh, weren't going to be good for good enough, in a sense, to have proper communication. But what, what was your experience after you actually arrived in Thunder Bay? 
Oh, uh, the first one, uh, it was in uh, airport, actually, because there is a team uh, that uh, gonna welcome to you from Lakehead. It was an awesome experience because you feel, at first, when, I, when you come to a new, especially new country, you feel alone, so you do not know about nothing. For sure, you did some research, but uh, it's so new for you. So someone from Lakehead come and welcome to us, starting that conversation with her somehow not that much difficult but some, somehow new for me but uh, no when, when you start English especially in Lakehead with the staff nobody tell you I can't understand you what are you saying they totally they confirm that your English is good and I understand you and you know encourage you to continue so the things that I got that just don't be afraid to start in conversation conversation in English especially you should be the first one to start the converse conversation to improve your English knowledge so awesome well thank you for answering that um so obviously I want to take this opportunity to chat with you about academics chat with you about the faculty of business administration at Lakehead your program all that sort of stuff uh but to start there I kind of want to ask you like how did you end up picking your program uh, uh... If you ask me about the furthering my study at Lakehead for business, because my uh, undergrad program was industrial management and mm -hmm. my first master program in my country was IT management. So I was specialized and interested in business as well. So I want to go through my study again. But the things that I got business from the first time when I graduated from high school, if you want to know about that, actually my major specifically was related to mathematics. So I was good at that. And even I can choose engineer as my major. But based on my personality, because uh, choosing major is go back to your personality and interested as well. So I choose business because I'm the person that wants to start new idea, talk about new things, start the conversation because marketing being more confident is so important in business. So based on that feature, I think that the, this major is good for me. So For sure, yeah. Um, and then also speaking to the fact that you completed to uh, an undergrad within the business field and then you completed your first master's within the business field. It was kind of that natural uh, segue into another business uh, degree that's a bit different um, within the, the Lakehead uh, and Thunder Bay. Uh, you, yeah, you mean, um, so, okay. Sorry, sorry, yeah. So I was, I also know that you mentioned um, that business you when you choose business as a program uh you pick it because of your personality typically and like it's based on your passions too um but i also know that you mentioned that you um you picked it because you wanted to grow your confidence in being able to speak on topics and then also have your voice heard so in other fields it's very maybe technical whereas in business it can be very passion driven um, and you can kind of expand your knowledge on so many different topics. So could you speak to that and maybe tie it into how, how your program at Lakehead is helping you with that too? For sure. Um, for these things, for example, our prof, uh, when I choose my prof and want to choose my uh, topic for my project, I go uh, to him and ask uh, what's going to be my topic for my research. And uh, his specialization is in IT management. So for sure, I think that he's going to offer me something like that. Uh, but at first, uh, he said that I didn't give you any option or any suggestion because I want to open uh, anything for you. You can pick uh, anything that you want that you're interested in are you gonna more than welcome to help you in that so these things is good for me because as a business student uh, if if you have more option you're gonna be more creative to go through that so it's the good, good things about the professor at Lakehead they gonna give you as much as option that you want you can choose anything that you want and they're gonna help you to go through that and after I choose my topic and consult with my professor about that and narrow it down to something that I can go through and research on that. So yeah, these things related to my experience in business was awesome. So, For sure, yeah. Um, and then speaking to some of your classmates too, I know 
uh, that you had a photo to share with us uh, and the audience about some of your classmates and how you've been able to connect with them um, on more than just the maybe classmate level. And now they're, they've become true friends and they've helped you celebrate some Exactly. Stuff. I okay. have some photos for you here. So just wait. Turn my camera. So yeah, this is the so many events that I go through the university and I find some uh, friends over there. So here is two of my classmates in my program in this photo that you can see. So it was mm -hmm. my per birthday, my first birthday in Canada that I, I invite my new friends to that. So sure. it was so good. And two of them are of my classmates so in this photo we have Halloween party in university so I yep. found so many friends over there and in this photo it was a uh, party for before Christmas so we have Santa over there as well so there is so many events in university that you can uh, find new friends and make some relationship with them it's so good and in this one is the final gathering for the faculty um, and before Christmas, I mean, they closed the university, oh, okay, yeah. yeah, for winter. So it was it was a good experience, and I can find so many friends, yeah, over there. For sure, yeah. And just speaking to the fact that obviously you've made friends with some of your classmates now, and uh, they've been able to support you for your birthday, um, but also celebrate different holidays that uh, exactly maybe in Canada are, are quite traditional so when we have when we celebrate Halloween of course uh, some people will go all out and dress up in full costumes and some people will just throw on some hats or do some fun activities um, and then Christmas too is another big celebration within Canada and we uh, do have celebrations for the international department um, as well as uh, it looks like your faculty got together and a few of them dressed up as elves too, it looked like. Exactly. Um, so what else do you like most about your program? Uh, the things that I like most, as I mentioned to you, was a uh, <clears throat> professor was more than welcome to help you in any things that you need to have any time during the day, especially I mean the, the day that they work, they're going to answer your email, they're going to have some chat in their office with you and solve your problem. It's a good thing that uh, every time that you need help, they're going to be available for you. And uh, the second thing, especially related to my program, my classmate was uh, so powerful so they are so good at the studying uh, and at first I was shocked because I think that I was behind the class and behind the knowledge but uh, after that when I take some help they are so helpful they're gonna help you in uh, any problem that you have as an inter international student so um, they power they good at the knowledge gonna excel you improve your knowledge improve your skill so sure. i was so lucky to have those professors and classmates in my program I mean. yeah i can i can appreciate that your classmates can obviously be there as like peer support to help you through exactly. um whether there's a concept that you don't understand and you need help or even in some cases i'm sure that you've understood a concept or you've really grasped, grasped something and then somebody else is kind of like, I don't really get this. And you've been able exactly. to help them. So your classmates are very important, of course, in that peer support. But then at the end of the day, um, having your professor so accessible within those smaller classrooms um, is really important too because at the end of the day, it's your, it's your professor marking your marks or marking your assignments and your projects. It's not your classmates. As much as I wish that could happen, you know, because yeah. um, I'm sure your, your classmates would want to give you 100% on everything. Oh, um, Jordan, we had that option in one of our classes. One professor uh, give this, uh, th this opportunity to us. We present our final project and the other classmates should grade you. And based on those grades, okay. uh, yeah, it, it was a great idea. Yeah, I actually, to speak that too, now that I think about it, um, presentations within the faculty of business are really, really important. Yes. Um, of course, being a public speaker, that's where I gained most of my skills and my confidence in public speaking. Um, I still have my <laughs> ifs ands, um, but definitely the, the peer review um, is something really important because 
for one person to decide your whole grade on a presentation, whereas like if you're engaged in the audience and you're engaging your classmates and they're exactly. enjoying the material that you're talking about, um, their feedback and their input to the professor is also really important. So I also have experienced where uh, some of my peers have reviewed my work and marked my work. Um, I, I know that at the end of the day, the professor still has the overarching um, ability to give out the final grade, um, but they definitely take into consideration what the peers, what your peers and what your classmates thought. Exactly, about the yeah. Um, so can you speak to maybe some of the research? I know you've already covered uh, the flexibility of your professors in helping you choose a project um, and not necessarily a project just in IT, um, but could you kind of speak to the research that you've been involved in at Lakehead and within the program itself? Exactly. Uh, actually, the topic, if I want to generally speaking about the topic of my project is related to mm -hmm. assessing Canadian government related to smart contracts that they accept from the supplier. Uh, so, yeah, uh, even I have a good experience if you want to know about the things that you said about the presentation and the research over Lakehead. It was a good opportunity in Lakehead for Research and Innovation Week that every student, especially in graduate level, even undergrad can attend that. There's two options that three minutes presentation and poster presentation that you can choose from. So I choose the poster presentation and I made a poster based on my findings so far about my project and uh, go through that. So that was an awesome experience for me because uh, speaking in the public about the things that you work on and you have passion about. So it's going to be give you some confidence, give you a good experience for your future things because I want to go for a conference for presenting my real one, for presenting my project. So it was a good experience for me to attend to that. Uh, for conference. sure. And do you have, um, I, I believe you have a photo from that. Yes, exactly. I can show too. you my, mm -hmm. so yeah. So just to reiterate, so this was, um, your poster presentation that was a part of the research and innovation week that Lakehead University held. Exactly. Um, and so you and your classmates had the choice as to whether they wanted to do a poster or a three minute presentation. Um, and it was tied into the research that you were doing. So I know that you already spoke about uh, you were analyzing a smart contract system that the federal government, the Canadian government could use. So obviously uh, treating a government just like a business and s securing contracts and securing suppliers uh, for different needs within the government. Uh, you did research based on kind of the, a digital process for that. Yes, exactly. And uh, there is a um, sources that I use from from Canada government that was open mm -hmm. open source for everybody that can use that. So yeah, I took a data driven approach for doing that. And here is my poster and me. I was not the winner of that presentation because there is a winner that Lakehead choose one and there is a prize for that. So I encourage everybody for next year that attend to this, uh, you know, event is going to be a good experience. I mean, for sure. Yeah. And I actually even participated in the undergraduate portion of that in my third year, I was in an HR class and we did some research um, with a local company here in Thunder Bay and we analyzed some of the um, HR processes for that company. And we, we analyzed kind of why employees were leaving the company, why they weren't retaining employees for a long time. Um, and so my group, and I believe there was 12 in total presentations from one class. So it was really exciting to be involved in like the, the full day. It was a lot of practice and a lot of prep for it. And then leading up to it, it was like a sigh of relief when I actually got to the Agora and I had my poster there and I was like, okay, now I just have to talk about my research. And like, it, it's yeah. something, it's a skill that not everyone recognizes. Like you put yeah. so much time and energy into your research and then actually presenting it and being able to communicate it in um, easy terms so that a stranger on the street could technically walk exactly. past and you could fill them in. Um, it was really important for me to learn that skill too. Exactly. Um, and so, Another thing for, for my last couple questions today, um, I always like to get students to showcase kind of uh, a life-changing moment for you. Um, and I know that seems really broad. So a life-changing moment could be uh, kind of the time or 
maybe a moment in time or a certain thing within your life at Lakehead that really made you realize, like, I made the right choice. I'm here and I'm so excited for the journey. Oh, yeah. The most important thing that uh, was like a changing mo moment for my time in uh, Lakehead, in Thunder Bay, was the nature in university and the round of that in the town. It was so exciting. Even in university, you have so many spots that you can go and enjoy the, the view, the things, the stuff, especially in the spring and when it's good weather. Uh, and the other things that I can mention that like a changing moment for me for uh, studying in Lakehead University is totally based on technology. For me, uh, it's not just uh, my previous program was just reading some article and going through that, but here I learn uh, I, I learn about two uh, different stuff that is related to presentation or one software that I can use for my project so it was good actually I learned, learned so many things and even I can enjoy to using them and being in the like head so awesome and do you have a photo for the for um, some of those nature sure. moments where you got to explore exactly. the campus as well as the Thunder Bay area Actually, it was my first snowshoeing that I go through the uh, Lakehead oh, University. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was awesome. And, and so that snowshoeing, was that on campus? Exactly. Was that... that was on, okay. on campus. An event in LU that uh, one, uh, the Richard, as you know, uh, yeah, teach us to how to do that. And we go through the on campus. And the other things, my first uh, ice skating was in Thunder Bay. So yeah, yeah. it was a good practice for me to learn about that. Unfortunately, winter is over now, so I can't try that again, maybe next year. Yeah. So it was an absolutely the best spot in Thunder Bay, Sleeping Giants. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of a hiking, long hiking. So, but, but is, uh, you know, it, uh, it deserve you, you you should go it was said you should go through that For so sure, yeah. and it was my first my first day in thunder bay we went out with my friends and make some chicken in nature and okay. uh, yeah so yeah. you did that over like an open fire like a yeah barbecue. but but we protect we but we protect the nature yeah of course yeah yeah <laughs> It was awesome, that view in uh, Thunder Bay. And uh, this was the night that I uh, talked about uh, to you, the Christmas dinner, the traditional one, that to the okay. great staff of university was hosted us, Trudy and his beloved uh, husband, John. So it's me and two other students at Lakehead. And it was a great dinner and night with them. Awesome. Yeah. So you really got the the Canadian Christmas experience. Exactly. Uh, even though you were in Thunder Rain, um, you weren't necessarily to celebrate in person with your family. I'm sure you maybe FaceTimed them or Skyped them or something. Um, but you got to have that in-person celebration. So. Exactly, Jordan. Yeah. Awesome. So I see a question here. Is there a club for Iranian students? So I know that there is a club. Are you a part of the club? Exactly. And uh, we have a club for Iranian students at Lakehead. And we have two events for our two main celebration over there. We have Yalda night and Nowruz, the new year in Iran. So unfortunately, this year we didn't have any of those. But yeah, last year the people work on that. At, uh, there is a good celebration. Yes. For sure. And that's just one of the many clubs. I know we have over 50 clubs on campus and they're organized by uh, maybe culture, they're organized by uh, region of the world, they're organized by faculties and programs, passions, interests, activities, politics. There's so many different clubs that you can join. And obviously, I always encourage students to get out and join these clubs and explore their options. And that's one of the best ways to obviously meet people that are outside of your program. Um, I'm sure it, just being in class and working on group projects and working with your classmates uh, for that peer support, you're going to make friends with them there. Uh, but you, you don't want to limit yourself to the possibilities of making new friends and other friends uh, throughout the university. So I always encourage students to be involved in 
do a few extracurriculars. And if you need help, of course, we have our international student advisors on campus uh, that are willing to take those counseling meetings and chat with you and see sort of where your interests lie and what groups might line up with that. Um, so I am being uh, just cautious about the time here. I'm going to answer one of the one more question here, and then I'll have one last one for you, Kiana. Okay. <clears throat> so the question is, are there any chances for conditional acceptance? Uh, so there are conditional offer letters that Lakehead sends out both the undergrad and grad level. Um, what they typically uh, mean is that a student has submitted their application, has submitted all of their supporting documents, so all of the requirement documents. Um, but in some cases, for example, if you're going to a, uh, a graduate level program and you are still completing your undergrad uh, at your home institution, you may receive a conditional offer letter and the condition is simply submitting the proof of degree and the proof of graduation. Um, and so that comes towards maybe if you're entering the fall, that comes towards July and August. Um, given the current situation, both undergrad and grad, our admissions team are working on an individual basis and directly with our applicants to make sure that any of the processes that may be affected by the coronavirus, um, that we have procedures in place and we are helping our students. So there's a lot of flexibility with submitting documents. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. You can chat with us at welcome at lakeheadu.ca and that's our general email and then we can connect you with the proper department if we need to. Another question I have here, um, I can't go into detail about it, but what types of housing do you recommend? Um, we actually have a housing webinar coming up on Monday. So um, I believe that is, let me pull out my calendar here, Monday the 20th. So next week, Monday the 20th at 10, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or Thunder Bay Time, um, we are doing a housing webinar with our Res Life team on both the Thunder Bay campus as well as our Aurelia campus. We'll also be joined by an international recruiter um, and myself, of course, co-hosting, and we'll chat about housing options both on and off campus. So I do encourage you to join us there. If you check out our social media channels, uh, we will post the registration link in the coming days. So my last question for you, Ken, uh, to wrap up, I, I'm me mindful of the time. I know that we'll probably have another minute before Instagram automatically tries to boot us off at the okay. one hour mark. Uh, what advice would you give to future students? Oh, the, I think two major things that I give you as advice for future international specialist student. Uh, one of them is don't be afraid of unknown. Uh, because there is so many new things that when you come to a new um, country, new city as an immigrant gonna be happen to you. Don't be uh, sorry, my charge. Just no worries. Over. <laughs> so yeah, don't be afraid of all of them. Go through them, and it's gonna be easy when you go through them. I mean, so the next thing that is. Uh, I can say that is uh, at the continue of my previous uh, advice is that meet new people and communicate with people outside of your comfort zone. Be out for your comfort zone because it's so important that you improve your English knowledge, you improve your connection over here because in Canada, connection and your English is two most important things that you can have. So these two advice is the most important one, I think. For sure, for sure. Well, thank you so much for joining us Welcome. today, Kiana. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to answer so many questions from our students. Um, if we weren't able to answer your question today, please feel free to send us a direct message on Instagram and we'll be happy to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, if any questions arise, maybe in a day or two or even in the coming weeks, please feel free to connect with us. We're here for you, we're here to support you. Um, and also to reiterate, we do have daily live events at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and the next one is going to be tomorrow. We are covering uh, criminology. So we have a professor from the Department of Criminology uh, chatting with us for a full hour about the program, about the course offerings, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then the following Monday, like I mentioned, we are going to be doing a housing and residence webinar. So I also encourage you to join us on there. Um, all of our social medias will have those registration links accessible. Otherwise, I will end it off there today. Um, thank you so much again for joining us and hopefully we'll thank see you, you at the next one. Yeah, thank Bye. you. Stay safe. Bye. Thanks.